Okay, good evening to everybody. I hope everybody's doing amazing. Um, I apologize if I'm speaking too loud or not. Here where I live, it's raining a lot, like a lot. So that's why I had to look for headphones because I feel like I cannot even hear myself. Can you hear me well? Okay, awesome. Okay, so the headphones are working. <laughs> Um, so today we're going to be doing a lot of things. Um, most importantly, today we have the second batch of impromptu speech. Yay! I hope you're super excited about the second batch and having the opportunity of going for the impromptu speech, okay? But before doing so, we're going to start with Unit 9B, okay? Unit 9B is the one that we have in page 72, okay? So please go to page 72. And while you do so, I'm going to fix myself a tea very quick. Just in case, um, again, it is page 72. Okay, I'm back, back, back again. So everybody in page 72? Nope, not yet. Okay, don't worry, money. Is it raining where you live or no? Just where I live. Here's no rain, but in the, yesterday was a lot of rain. Uh, not today. Today. Uh -huh. But lucky. Well, I mean, I love I love rain. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say I don't. I love when it's raining. Especially for sleeping. Sleeping with rain is the best. At least for me. I love it. But yes, when, when you have to teach, it's very difficult. Um, if you thank God you're virtual, so we can use the mic here. But if I wear in a classroom, I have to scream. And that is, I mean, like you end up speaking like this. So it's horrible. So yes, I like the I like the rain just for sleep. Because if you have to do something outside, it's very so, Yes. <laughs> but for sleep, is Yes. Nice. Now here in Athens, it's uh, raining a little bit, but it's raining. No, here it's raining a lot. Like a lot. And it's very cold. I was checking the temperature and we were like in 17 degrees. Just to be at bed in the bed on in the bed with a chocolate <laughs> and watching night. a movie or a TV series yeah. or something. Well, yes. okay, okay, bye bye. See you. <laughs> <laughs> In Orlando, yes. Now that now that I think about it, I could just go for it. <laughs> We are going to start with the book or the impromptu speech. No, we're going to start with the book and the impromptu speech is what we have for uh, the end of the class. Like dessert. What's the best part of a meal? Dessert. <laughs> so the impromptu speech is going to be the dessert. <laughs> but I have a question. The impromptu speech was... Well, it was going to be today. <laughs> but uh -huh. I think in the... Yeah, program says that is on Wednesday. Did I say Wednesday? I I thought. Hmm, let me check because in my mind it's I the same. Asked. I think I think it's the same. But... I agree. No, but if it oh, is no, Wednesday, it's the same. <laughs> let me well, see. for me, I was surprised today, but well, okay. <laughs> no, it doesn't say. No, it's, no, it says impromptu speech second batch. 
No, Monica. Today is the ah, today is the person that who didn't do it, didn't the didn't... first exactly, exactly. Ah, okay, the, this okay, one okay. is for the people who didn't do the the in, do, didn't do it in the first batch. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I did it. I I did it. So <laughs> yes, <laughs> so you're free. You're free. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but uh, Wednesday is the second round. Maybe I can, no. Okay, okay. No, no, there is no second round. Um, we did the practice, and then the next one was going to be the one that was going to be graded. Um, the first batch did it like I think like last week or the week before, and the second batch is the one that is going to be doing it today. Okay, everybody in page 72? Yes. Awesome. Okay, so page 72 talks about fears, okay? So tell me, what is one thing that scares you a lot or the thing that scares you the most? What I animals, animals too? Yes, it can okay. be animals, uh different things, etc. I'm afraid to die with no oxygen, like in a fire or oh god, I don't know how to say that. Drown. Drown. Uh-huh. Drown. Or with with land, with soil in their face, I don't know. But yeah, I'm afraid of that. Okay. Lucky for me, I am going to die when I am, um, when I had, I don't know how to say this. When you are? Uh, 90, when... 90 years old, and it's going to be a hard stroke. So, Everything is good. <laughs> something quick, something fast, just like that. Yeah, yeah. And maybe sleep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To make it even better. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How about the other? I also hate as like suffocating. I hate it. And drowning is one. When I was very young, a kid, I almost died, uh, drown. So I have this sort of, I love water. But I'm scared of water at the same time. Like if I don't touch like the ground, like the bottom of the of the place, I panic. It happened yeah. to me. I want to give you, I want to tell you a quick um anecdote. It happened to me a few years ago, like not so many. What like I don't know how long I go to be honest. Anyway, I, I uh, uh -huh. uh, sorry, sorry. No, okay. Mine is very quick. I was just um iron bowl. Uh, swimming classes at Una. Um, so Una has like a like a like a well like a pool like a semi Olympic pool. So I was I just got in and the and the trainer told me, do you know how to like do the freestyle? And I was like, I know a little bit of it. So I she was like, okay, go. Let me see you like swimming. And I was okay. So I just got into the pool and I was swimming. I never asked how deep the pool was so of course i got on the on the low side and i started swimming and usually i would get to the other side stop recover my breath and then continue swimming okay i got to the other side and when i went when i stopped i was gonna touch like the bottom and i was like drowning or not drowning i was just going down and down and the water was already over my head and I wasn't touching the bottom and I was, and I panicked. I was like, oh my God, I'm not touching the bottom and the water, it's already above my head. So I I, I was thinking, I was like, what can I do? I'm, I'm dying because I'm that dramatic. I was like, I'm dying. And I was like, what can I do? And all I could think about was, okay, use your strength, like to try to go faster to the bottom. And once you touch the bottom, you jump, and you start swimming again. And that's exactly what I did. I kind of used all my weight to go down. 
touch the bottom, jump, and I continue swimming almost until I got to the other um, side of the pool, and then I didn't die. But since I didn't know how deep it was, I was just like, ah, I'm just going to recover my breath. And the moment that I stopped, I just sunk like a ship. It was super scary. I was like, oh, this is it. I'm just going to, yeah. back then I was like 20 something. I was like, I'm just going to die at 20 something years. <laughs> That's my well, in, <laughs> in In this case, it's the best practice. To die at 20. No. <laughs> when when you when you touch the um, like the bottom the, the, the bottom and jump or can uh, uh, swim again or take a I don't know uh, like a lifesaver yes <laughs> I know it's better. best practice to die <laughs> <laughs> yes I was like wow I didn't know that <laughs> I don't know when when you have a problem in in the, in the water. This is the best practice: mm -hmm. touch yeah. and jump. Well, yes. I didn't know. It was just my instinct. I was like, "What? What can <laughs> I do?" I'm dying. Yeah, and the instructor is, was not paying attention. Uh huh. Yeah, the problem is if if you get tired and you can swim, uh, that's a problem. Uh, <clears throat> that happened to me in Limon. But I was so scared because in Limon the the, the sea is like um, in a in a, in a one level and mm -hmm. it's no it's no deep mm -hmm. just um como se dice corales or arrecifes uh coral corals coral in, the, in the in the bottom of the sea but it's it's no deep mm -hmm. and I was swimming and no there's no did a snorkeling and I was swimming and then I didn't touch the the bottom and I get scared. And I start to swim to the to the boat. No 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 to the shore. Yeah to the ¿cómo se dice? Inicio de la playa. Sí, to the shore. Uh -huh. la, co la costa. La costa. Uh -huh. And I get tired and I saw my husband and I was thinking, I am going to scream. I am going, but I said, no, 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 no. Just swim a little bit more. And then I put my my feet on the, the surface and, and I said, well, was hope that I didn't do any dramatic scene. <laughs> but I was scared. Gosh, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. When, when I was a child, I used the uh, I don't I don't say uh, frog legs in in a pool. See, but the rana is a frog legs. I have no idea, but let me check. I don't know. <laughs> like the ones they use for swimming. Yes. Okay, let me check. I don't uh, I don't know how, but I was able to get up to the, the shore and, uh, and stand up with my hands. Mm -hmm. But it uh, was the, the worst experience in, in the water. Don't use frog legs in a pool. Gosh, can you imagine? And then see. Flippers. Flippers. Yes, I didn't know. Flippers is how you say uh, pata de rana. Okay. I, I'm going to be honest. I didn't even know that that was their name in Spanish. I have never used them. I've seen them. I never used them. So I didn't know that was their name in Spanish. I just thought they were something to swim and that was it. Okay. Flippers. Okay. Flippers. Uh -huh, exactly. I'm going to write it here in the chat just in case. Sleepers. Okay. It sounds like the like the dolphin. I like the name. Yes. Um, okay, so how about the others? Or what's a fear that you have? 
I hate the frogs and I die too <laughs> if you put a frog in my hand <laughs> or uh, my back. I don't hate them. I, I do find them disgusting. Disgusting too. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, how about the others? Dan and Ali, good evening. Hello, teacher. Hello. Good night. In my oh. case, I hate uh, snakes and the spiders and all all the little animals. <laughs> uh, okay. Ali, Al yes, how are you, Ali? Sunshine. Um, I don't know the uh, heights. Alturas. Uh huh. Heights. 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 Okay. I I scared the heights, but is uh big heights. Okay. For example, when the last vacation in Jai and me uh, tried the canopy. Uh huh. In the star is all very well. It's no problem. But when you come, you start and climb the stairs, the wheel of escalera. Uh, how about the ladder? Okay, uh, I I I feel a little scared, but but when I start in the in the in the cima, the like top. at the top of the hill. Uh huh. Yes, at the top, I very scared. <laughs> In, in in other other something is uh, the, 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 the jump jumping jumping no I don't like know bungee jumping el es que se me va el nombre cuando te tiras de un puente ah bungee bungee bungee, bungee. bungee yes. jumping Oh, I couldn't this do bungee small. jumping. I mean, I would I, die. I <laughs> it's more serious. For the second time. <laughs> for the second, I would die for the second time. And, but the sad thing is I wouldn't be at my 20s, I'd be in my 30s. But yes, I, I wouldn't be able to do bungee jumping. I've done canopy, Superman, and Tarzan swing. But bungee, I wouldn't. I just really wouldn't. It's I think it's very different. Yes. I mean, you're jumping into nothing. Yes. Yes. In my in in my case, when Alejandro and I uh, tried the canopy, yes. there there were many child with us, <laughs> and I, I I thought, Jan, if the child can, you can. <laughs> Because I was very scary, but the child, the child was like, relaxed, mm -hmm. and I think that's that's not possible. If the child can, I can, but but was nice. Yeah, I actually think when I got, I did mine in Monteverde, and I was not gonna do it. I was with a cousin, and I was like, I'm gonna go with you, but I don't think I'm gonna do it because I'm very scared of heights. And I was there and I was like, no, I don't, I don't think I'm going to do canopy. I don't think I'm going to do any of these things. And when I got there, I don't know where I got the strength. I was like, let's do it. Let's do it and see what it is. <laughs> and, and I liked it. I really liked it. And I'm very happy that I did it. But it was scary at the beginning when I saw the heights and everything uh, and, and the distance. Because there are some yes. of those that are very long. So I was like, oh, my goodness. Like, what's this? Yes, in in our case, I think was three hundred meters the first the first canopy, wow. and then two hundred and the meters meters, but the the first time is <clears throat> difficult because in my case was the yeah. first the first. Uh, time mm -hmm. but when you when you pass the I don't know when you stay in the moment mm -hmm. take a breath and do it exactly the, like that breath that you take is just 
Like he takes yes, away your like fear. It, the view is is beautiful and it's it's nice. Yes, yes, yes. I enjoy it. Me too, and I think it's something that um, a lot of people should do. So I agree. Well, I think most people should do. Um. Okay, guys. So here in this part. Well, first of all, I like this conversation that we're having. I think this is a very interesting topic and a very fun topic as well to talk about. So today we're going to be talking about fears and I actually brought a video for you. Okay, so we're going to talk first about these different um, fears that we have here. We have five different fears and I love that we have five because we are five, well, six with me, but I don't count. So you, each one of you is going to be able to read a different one. And the idea is that on top of the images, we have some words like phrases, fear of butterflies, fear of crowds, fear of doctors, fear of dying, driving, sorry, and fear of heights. Okay. The idea is that we can take those and put them in the blank spaces that we have in one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. So we're going to start reading each one of them. We're going to start with number one. Um, Jeanette, can you help me with number one? Yes, teacher. Uh, some people, Esa. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> some people with this phobia find it difficult to pass the test. Others are anxious or freeways or St. roads. In extreme case, people are afraid of being a passenger in a vehicle. Vehicle. Mm -hmm. Vehicle. Yes, very good. Okay, which one do you think it is, Jeanette? Fear of butterflies, crowds, doctors, driving, or heights? Driving. Yes, correct. Um, number two, um, let's see, Rolando. Okay. Uh, people say that actress Nicole Kidman surfaced from the this phobia. It is uh, closely linked to uh, general fears or insects. People with this phobia are afraid of most insects with winds and um, they feel na I'll say nauseous. Nauseous. No, nauseous. Nauseous. Mm -hmm. Okay, Nos, nauseous. Or they panic if they see them. Okay, which one do you think it is? Uh, I don't know, fear of butterflies. Yes, yes, it is correct. Uh, especially because it says insects. Insects is the part that like kind of tells yes. you about it. Thank you. Um, let's see, Moni, Moni, can you read the next one? Uh, this phobia is very common in young children, but adults suffer from it too. Many are especially afraid of having vaccinations or blood tests. Fear of doctor. Yes, correct. You know, <laughs> this one sounds interesting, but I'm going to be honest. I hate needles. <laughs> like I genuinely and with all my heart hate needles. Like I am very old and up to this day, if I go to get a blood test, I am the person who does this. And I look <laughs> away. And I and I turn when they they are like they are like um what is the word do they use um well, something like like papi or muchacho like like afloje and then I they put like the the cotton here and I'm like here and they're like five minutes and I stay like this like for twenty or thirty minutes it is like five but I, and I'm even driving driving like this I, that's how dramatic I am with needles because I really don't like them and I I hate it. Because I wish I didn't, because I would like to donate blood, but I honestly don't see myself with a huge needle on my arm, like for half an hour, like I would die. 
I would just die probably. So, but yeah, so I I understand the fear of doctors. And the worst thing, well, the best thing and the worst thing is that I am very like healthy. So I've never broken a bone. I've never been hospitalized. Any of these things have happened to me. In my entire life, only once I had like a, like a via, like an intravenosa, like an intravenous thingy, one, only one time in my life. So that, that since I'm not exposed to this, I am um like, it makes, it doesn't feed my fear, but it doesn't make it any easier. Thank you, Moni. Uh, let's see, Ale. Ale, can you help me with number four? Okay, teacher. <clears throat> this fear affects nearly on one in every 20 adults. People with this phobia usually avoid tall buildings, skins, or standing on bal balconies. I think it's fear of heights. Correct. Balconies. Balconies. Okay. Yes. Thank you. And Dan, Dan, can you help me with number five? This phobia affects many people, but women more than men. These people feel very anxious or scared. If they are in a noisy place where there are a lot of people, for example, a shopping mall or a sports stadium, they often avoid these kinds of place. I think is fear of crowds. Crowds, correct. Super quick, uh, Jan, women. Women, yes. Yes, woman is one, women is plural. Women. So women yes. and scared. <laughs> Remember the pronunciation scared. of a past? Scared, yes, very good. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going to watch the video that I told you about that talks about the weirdest phobias, okay? So I'm going to stop recording because since it's a video that I didn't produce, then it shouldn't appear on the call. Okay, guys, now that we already watched the video, which is the phobia that you think or that caught your attention the most? I don't remember the name, but <laughs> uh, shower phobia. <laughs> okay, I can imagine. <laughs> oh my God. And it's common in Europe, okay? We know that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought when I watched the video the first time. I was like, we know that. They still have that fear. Uh, but yes. Yes, yes, yes. The one that I found very interesting is the one of things being on your right or your left. I was like, what? Like, I don't know. It just didn't make any sense to me. Uh, and the last one, the fear of having a phobia. So like the phobia of having a phobia. I was like, that's being overthinker to the maximum. Like, I don't know. Okay, how about the others? Which ones caught your attention the most and why? I, um, I, I don't know if I understand understand to, uh, correctly, but there is a phobia of cheese. Can you imagine? No. <laughs> I was like, when I watched the video. And I can imagine. And cheese, that is one of the greatest things in the world. Mm. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the guy saying, like, mozzarella wasn't that scary. I was like, no, it's not as scary. Mozzarella is just like a piece of art. You can put mm -hmm. mozzarella in everything and it's going to taste better. <laughs> yes, yeah. me too. Like, it would be good to have a pizza today. Do you know? I just thought of it. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, there is a phobia of cheese. Okay, Moni, how about you? Which one caught your attention the most? Um, Pope phobia. Oh, I don't know the name. Mm -hmm. Papa phobia. Papa phobia. This that is weird. And I think the one that is more things like phone and that that is not a phobia. It's an addiction. <laughs> I think that. No, I, I totally agree with you. I think probably because of me being old. 
I like I like my phone and I use it a lot, but I'm not afraid to not no. be on my phone. It has happened to me like this year, like at least three times that I leave my apartment, I go to work and I don't have my phone. And I get to, and I realize because when I'm in the car, I click the bottom to connect and it says no media. And I'm like, oh, that means that my phone is not here, which means that my phone is in my apartment. So, and I go to work and I work from seven until 410 in the high school. And I stayed there the whole day without a phone. And I'm totally fine with it because since I have my watch, then I can see the time so I can for the breaks and everything so i don't i don't use my phone so i'm not i'm not really afraid of i'm not having a phone but can you no, mind me taking a shower with your phone no no like, that is an addiction I, no it is it, it, it makes no sense mm. okay yeah. um janning and ale which a phobia has caught your attention the most did you in my case uh... The, I don't remember the name, but the phone, I think is is with respect to the old people, but I think is um, ridiculous because the phone is is important. Yes, it's very useful. Yes, well. It's very useful, mm -hmm. but it's is not all for for us. <clears throat> it is for me is more uh, the the disorder. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Guys, have you ever watched? Sorry, Jan. Guys, have you ever watched this documentary called The Social Dilemma? <gasps> you should. It's a masterpiece. I love it. It's my favorite documentary in the whole world. Everything about it is just perfection. The information they present is very useful and very important. And the way that everything is presented, the animation, everything about it is, I love it. It's my favorite documentary in the whole world. What's the name? <clears throat> the Social Dilemma. It's in, in Netflix, The Social Dilemma, or in Spanish, uh, El Dilema Social. Pero de verdad es a masterpiece. Hablan de eso, de, de la adicción a los, a los teléfonos, digamos, o a las redes sociales. Y más allá de eso, que en lugar que las empresas como Twitter, Instagram y Facebook y todo eso, y Google, en lugar de intentar tratar de quebrar esta adicción, como a ellos les sirve, porque la gente pasa conectada, es, tienen gente como equipos tratando de hacerlo más adictivo. Entonces, en, en, en el documental salen um, lots of people that used to work there. Y de hecho ahí sale como vice, ex vicepresidente de Facebook o tal cosa de, de LinkedIn o así, ahí sale. Entonces, it's really, really great. The information they present is great. Everything is great. Y la animación, el, el, todo. O sea, para mí ese documental es amazing. It's my favorite in the whole world. Apple, Apple, eh, I don't know if that Right now, uh, uh, make the, I don't know, the 3D lens uh -huh. or... Yes, 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 yes. But it's Meta. Meta. Meta, meta Apple, and I don't know, Mario is, you know, no more than I about that topic. But I think it's crazy. I think, I think it's crazy because... It is going to make us out of the reality world because you can answer the phone, you can see the uh, uh, movies, you can do everything uh, with your glasses. I don't know. Yes. The name yes, yes, that. yes. And is and you can change your image for the other people. O sea, is unreal i don't know and it it's is crazy it, it it really is uh it's called <laughs> apple vision pro that's the, uh, yeah. the of the like the goggles that they are yeah. creating it's not ready yet as far as i know uh, it's salido en Estados. they're going to create they already announced it and they're working on it but they haven't launched it i don't know why 
Pero, eh, but yes, it's going but to it's crazy. be, it's really crazy. It's dangerous. I think it's dangerous for, I don't know, for the kids and for, for everything. I agree. I saw, I saw a movie that, well, if you, if you see Avatar, Avatar is, is, you are in, um, in, um, in uh, a real world and your body is, Somewhere there. Else. Yes. Yeah. Avatar is very good movie, but it's something like that. Exactly. It's a slightly scary. I agree. Um, Dan, what were you gonna say? Which one is the one that caught your attention? Other other point, okay. excuse me, teacher. Okay. Uh I, I saw a short film mm -hmm. uh, about how the, the people was able to create um a scam troll. Uh, social uh, social media uh, photos because in the photos uh, from different days and different uh, publication uh, the people uh, was taking in uh, information for example uh, with uh, graduation uh, with um, uh, a picture with uh, I don't say the diploma the um, diploma. Okay, take a, a for example, no, no, a diploma de degree. A degree, sorry. Uh -huh. Um, for example, the address, uh, date of uh, birth, um, and card number, uh, a credit card, for mm -hmm. example, uh, and, and different times take a, a photos, and for example, create um, uh Stafa, is a uh, like a rip off or or a scam. A scam, yes, yes, a scam. Yes, 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 yes. In the U.S., there is a movie. It's a it's a comedy movie, and it's funny. You could watch it. It's called Identity Theft. Uh, can roll with identity. is this actress, uh, Melissa McCarthy. I think she's really fun. If you haven't watched it, you can watch it. Uh, it's. It's funny, but it's real. In the U.S., it's very real, very, very, very real. So, in a interview, uh, they ask people, for example, uh, do you have a password uh, difficult for I don't know for the bank? Uh, no, no. Um, it's it's very easy. It's my birth, uh, my date, birth, and uh, the name. Of, uh. I don't know with my girlfriend or pet. Oh, really? That's uh, that's very nice. And and the other conversation. Um, what is your um, uh, what what all? Oh, oh, yes. What? Oh my God. And how old are you? How old? Yes. How old are you? And um, the people. Oh, um, I'm. I don't know. Twenty. Oh, really? What is your date birthday? And the people say, this is the 50% uh, the, the password for the bank. And the other, oh, you, do you have a pet? Yes, I have. Oh, uh, how many? At, I don't know, five. Uh, what is the, the name for your dog? Oh, the name is that the other 50% in for the, the, the password. Yes. Oh my God, can you imagine? Okay. Yes, um, yeah. Jan, so what we're gonna say about the phobias that caught your attention the most? Me, teacher? Yes. Okay, in my case, I think all of the all these fears is weird because it's more common um thing that uh, in the I don't know the fear for the heights or for insects or is common, mm -hmm. but for example, fear for the chills is weird, and for the young people is most <laughs> weird. And this of the if you see it in the right or the left is is for me all in the document is weird. It's I uncommon. I totally agree with you. Uh, 
I don't know. I don't know where these things come from. And I don't know. I mean, they're just crazy. I think my my dad will say that's just people that have nothing to do. And they're just thinking about what they can invent. So it's because those those phobias, I find them very strange. Like, I still, I cannot get over the fact that people have a phobia for having things on their right. Like, what's that? Can you imagine you appear? Oh my goodness! You no, like I don't know. Anyway, um, teacher, okay. yes, tell me. Can you, este, I don't know. How do you say buscar? Search. Search. In your, in your, in your Google, can you search the phobia or phobia for? Déjame hablar. Phobia for word large. Oh yes, yes. Uh yes, and the, and the word is super long. Um okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know who say in, in, in Spanish. How do you say? How do you say words? No, no Wait, my dog, let me just give me a second because my dog is doing something. Okay, I'm back. Uh, wow, I don't even know how to say this word. It's hypopotomonstrosicripedaliophobia. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna it's like a, a joke. Huh? It's like a joke for the person half year. I love it. Sí, se imagina usted teniendo esa fobia y llegar y decir, voy a buscar qué es lo que tengo. <laughs> y que le salga esa palabra, seguro le da un colapso. Parece una broma, pero es real. Hypopotomonstrosicquipedalophobia. <laughs> ¿Por eso la fobia qué? La Hola. fobia de las palabras largas. Y three, please. In page 73, I'm going to share my screen. In page 73, we have a quick listening. Okay? So... Please go there and I'm, I'm sharing my screen. That should be the page that you're looking at. Let me know once you're there. Okay, everybody there? Yes, it is. Awesome, okay. So we're gonna listen to these three times. The idea we have Julia and we have, tell me, you're not there. What is, what? No. It's page 73. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so we have Julia and we have Chloe and we have these five questions. First one, what is she afraid of? How long has she had the phobia? What does she think started it? How does it affect her life? And has she had any therapy? Okay, so let's listen to them and let's try to answer. 9.6 Julia Do you have any phobias? Yes, I'm very, very scared of spiders. And how long have you had this phobia? I've had it since I was about 12, so for more than 30 years. <laughs> Did something happen to start the phobia? I remember, and it's when I think I started being frightened. I remember a very big spider in the apartment that we lived in at the time, coming out from under the TV and going across the room, and me being absolutely terrified. And that's the first time I remember being scared. How does it affect your life? In the past, it was really awful. I mean, I couldn't sit in the same room as a spider, and I always had to keep all the doors and windows shut because I was frightened that spiders might come in. But I had some therapy, and I can now sit in the same room as a spider. Not for long. It still has to be moved. And I can put it in a glass now and take it outside myself. 
if I have to, if there's nobody else there. So it doesn't affect me as badly as it did before, but I still don't like them. What kind of therapy did you have? How long did it take? Probably about six weeks. I went to the therapist's office and he used a kind of hypnosis. He made me go back to that first incident with the spider and the TV, and we talked about it again and again until it wasn't so frightening. And then, in the last session, he brought in a spider in a jar into the room, and he made me hold the jar. I couldn't put the spider on my hand, but that was a great improvement, because before I couldn't even look at a drawing of a spider in a children's book, and I certainly couldn't look at photos of spiders. Wow, amazing. Chloe. Do you have any phobias? Um, yes, I have a phobia of buttons. Buttons on clothes? Yes, I don't like touching them. And how long have you had the phobia? All my life, I think, for as long as I can remember. Do you know what happened to start the phobia? I don't know exactly, but my mom has told me that when I was very little, about six or seven months old, she tried to dress me in a sweater, a wool sweater with buttons that my grandmother had made for me, and apparently I screamed and screamed until she took it off again. Okay. And how does the phobia affect your life? It really affects the kind of clothes I can buy, especially in the winter when I need a coat. There aren't many coats that don't have buttons. But it's better than it was. When I was younger, I refused to wear anything that had buttons. So, for example, my mother had to adapt my school clothes so that there were no buttons. Have you had any therapy? No, no. I haven't had any therapy. It seems like such a silly thing to be afraid of. What about if other people are wearing clothes with buttons on? Is that okay? Well, if the buttons aren't touching me, that's fine, but I don't like hugging people that have buttons on their clothes. Okay, guys, do you need to listen to it a second time? Yes, please. Okay, let's go for it a second time. 9.6 Julia Do you have any phobias? Yes, I'm very, very scared of spiders. And how long have you had this phobia? I've had it since I was about 12, so for more than 30 years. <laughs> Did something happen to start the phobia? I remember, and it's when I think I started being frightened. I remember a very big spider in the apartment that we lived in at the time, coming out from under the TV and going across the room, and me being absolutely terrified. And that's the first time I remember being scared. How does it affect your life? In the past, it was really awful. I mean, I couldn't sit in the same room as a spider, and I always had to keep all the doors and windows shut because I was frightened that spiders might come in. But I had some therapy, and I can now sit in the same room as a spider. Not for long. It still has to be moved. And I can put it in a glass now and take it outside myself, if I have to, if there's nobody else there. So it doesn't affect me as badly as it did before, but I still don't like them. What kind of therapy did you have? How long did it take? Probably about six weeks. I went to the therapist's office and he used a kind of hypnosis. He made me go back to that first incident with the spider and the TV, and we talked about it again and again until it wasn't so frightening. And then, in the last session, he brought in a spider in a jar into the room, and he made me hold the jar. I couldn't put the spider on my hand, but that was a great improvement, because before I couldn't even look at a drawing of a spider in a children's book. And I certainly couldn't look at photos of spiders. Wow. Amazing. Chloe. Do you have any phobias? Um, yes. I have a phobia of buttons. Buttons on clothes? Yes. I don't like touching them. And how long have you had the phobia? All my life, I think. For as long as I can remember. Do you know what happened to start the phobia? I don't know exactly. 
but my mom has told me that when I was very little, about six or seven months old, she tried to dress me in a sweater, a wool sweater with buttons that my grandmother had made for me, and apparently I screamed and screamed until she took it off again. Okay. And how does the phobia affect your life? It really affects the kind of clothes I can buy, especially in the winter when I need a coat. There aren't many coats that don't have buttons. But it's better than it was. When I was younger, I refused to wear anything that had buttons. So, for example, my mother had to adapt my school clothes so that there were no buttons. Have you had any therapy? No, no. I haven't had any therapy. It seems like such a silly thing to be afraid of. What about if other people are wearing clothes with buttons on? Is that okay? Well, if the buttons aren't touching me, that's fine. But I don't like hugging people that have buttons on their clothes. Okay, do you need a third time? Not teacher. Okay, let's go for the first one. Julia, okay, Jeanette, question one. What is Julia afraid of? Spiders. Correct, she's afraid of spiders. Number two, um, let's see, Jan. Jan, how long has she had the phobia? I think um, since 12. Since, no. Yes, yes, yes. Since she was 12 years old. For more than 30 years. So that means 30 years. 40 something. Uh -huh. uh, thank you. Number three, uh, Rolando, what does uh, Julia think started it uh with a very big spider in your bedroom no it wasn't mine it was in her bedroom in okay yes in her bedroom correct thank you uh number four uh let me see ali ali um how does it affect her, uh julia's life or her life <clears throat> okay, um, she can saw any spiders. She she feels very scared, and hey, I don't know. She can't see. Remember that after can you need to use the verb in the in the simple form. She can't see any spiders. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, who am I missing? Moni, I think. Okay, Moni, um, has she had any therapy? Yes, she had therapies for six weeks, and the therapist very helps her. Okay. Uh, because because uh, in the past. Uh huh. Uh, she can stand in the same room uh, with a spider, but mm -hmm. right now she can put it in a glass and take it off of the room and see pictures and mm -hmm. a lot of stuff more. Yep, <laughs> totally fine. Do you remember what type of um, therapy was the one that she got? She said he used a kind of... Mm -hmm, Hypnosis. 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 Correct. That was the one. Some sort of hypnosis. Okay, let's talk a little bit about Chloe. Chloe is like a very fun case. Okay, uh, Jeanette, what is Chloe afraid of? Her is afraid about buttons. <laughs> yes, she's afraid about buttons. That's very interesting. Okay, uh, Moni, how long has she had the phobia? And she said that forever because she remembered that her mom told him that told her that when she has six months, and she cries a lot because was a bottoms. <laughs> Correct. Um, Rolando, what does she think started it? I don't know. It's uh yeah. her mother trying uh put a, a cloak with the uh, buttons. Uh -huh. a it's a wool sweater. Do you know the meaning of wool? Wool is a material. 
Like lana, no. No, not que No, no, sí, es lana. <laughs> That's why I was trying to mimic like when people like they, they, uh, um, what's the word? They need. Cuando la gente teje. I don't even, I don't know how to do it, but I know like they, they need with uh, wool. So con lana. Um, okay, Jan, how does it affect uh, her life? I think not affect affect her, but she can use any person with buttons in her clothes. He can touch the button. She can touch them. Oh, correct. It it affects them. Uh, it affects her. Sorry, a little bit because she said, especially in the winter, when she needs to get like like clothes, like uh coats or sweaters. And she said, it's very difficult to find coats or sweaters without any buttons, okay? So, like, usually those type of uh, clothing, they have buttons on it, um, okay? And for the next one, Ale, has she had any therapy? No, she don't have therapy. She hasn't yes. had. Porque es un presente perfecto. Ya no ha tenido. Or she hasn't had or gone. She hasn't gone to therapy yet. O sea, nunca ha tenido therapy. Why? Why does she say that she has never gone to therapy? ¿Escuchas esa partecilla? No. Because, does, did anybody listen to that? Because she thinks that it's silly. Exactly. Porque ella dice que ella siente que es very silly. O sea, que es como muy tontillo. So, that's the reason why. Okay. Give me one second. Okay, sorry. Okay, very good. Now, in this same page, we are going, do we have any questions? Sorry, I didn't ask you for that part. Nope. Okay, please, let's click in this one, in the one that says grammar. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about present perfect using for and since. Okay, please let me know once you're there. Okay, everybody there? Yes? Okay. So yes, yes. let's talk a little bit about present perfect. Um, okay, we use the present perfect plus four and scenes to talk about actions and states that started in the past and are still true to now. Okay. For example, I've lived in Tokyo for 20 years. I came to live in Tokyo 20 years ago. Okay. Um, and I live in Tokyo now. We don't use the simple present in this type of sentence, okay? Um, the next one. We use how long to ask questions about the duration of an action or a state. How long have you been married? Okay? For and since we use for plus a period of time, for example, for two years, sorry, for two weeks, for 10 years, etc. I've had this car for three months. We use since with the beginning of a period of time. For example, since 2014, since last June, etc. I've been afraid of spiders 
since I was a child. Let's look at the examples. Where do you live now in Tokyo? How long have you lived there? I've lived there for 20 years. Um, where do you work um, in an elementary school? How long have you worked there? Um, I've worked there since 2015. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, now, before we move into the next part, let's talk a little bit about present perfect. So, how does it work? Okay, very simple. I know that you already know present perfect because we have seen it, but just this is just a quick reminder. Okay, to create a sentence in, in present perfect, we're going to have the subject. Plus have or has and the verb. But this verb should be in the past participle. Okay? Always, always, always. And then the complement. This will be a positive sentence. And to make it negative is pretty much the same. The only difference is that to the auxiliary, we add the not. Have not or haven't, has not or hasn't. Okay? That will be a negative statement. To make it into a yes or no question, we take the have or the has, which is the auxiliary, and we put it at the beginning of the sentence. Okay, let's go one by one. I have, I'm going to use me as an example. I have uh, taught, wait. I have taught English for, oh, wait. For 10 years. I have taught English for 10 years, okay? This is a positive sentence. If I want to make it negative, negative, I haven't taught English for 10 years, okay? If I want to make it into a yes or, ne or no question, I take the auxiliary and put it at the beginning. <clears throat> have. Have I taught English for 10 years? Okay, this will be a yes or no question with the, with the regular answer, yes, I have, no, I haven't, okay? I have period or no comma i haven't teacher the this is a this is a question yes if you say have i taught english for 10 years maybe it's just you asking yourself like wondering like saying it's, it's already that long like tanto tiempo ha pasado so it could be a, but yes it is a question it can also be for another person has <laughs> um Jeanette worked in accounting for more than 10 years. Okay, that could be a question. So- But I, I don't understand uh, why have I? Oh, this is, I'm just following the same example, but again, it's a, it could be a regular question. It could be you asking yourself. O sea, puede ser como que vos te haces la consulta de tanto llevo haciendo esto. Como cuando uno dice, como que, como que usted diga, ya he dado clases por 10 años. Como que uno dice, ah. tan viejo estoy. That would be oh, okay. that could be like the scenario. Ah, okay, okay. Obviamente, in my case, no, verdad? Because I'm super young. So, I'm just like, I'm just a little bit. Maybe <laughs> one and a half. Um, but yes, that would be the scenario. Again, it can change in any other scenario. This would be a yes or no question, and we're missing the WH questions. Okay, the WH questions are the ones that we 
used to get more information of the person, okay? For example, what have you done today, okay? And then your answer will be like a long sentence saying, I have cooked, I have cleaned, I have whatever you want to say, okay? The structure will be WH word. It's pretty much the same. WH word plus the auxiliary, which is have or has. Subject plus the verb and then the complement and the question mark. And that will be it, okay? Questions, comments, concerns, or doubts. Teacher, tell me. In this case, case, what have you done today? The answer is I have cooked. Uh -huh, with you can see that. ED exactly. In past participle. Exactly. I have cooked. Oh, okay. Any compliment. I have cooked. Um all your food, for example. I have cooked all your food. Or I have cleaned the car, etc. It can be any other sentence. But yes, it should have the have or the has in the verb in the past participle, okay? Um, a small parenthesis over here, guys. Um, this is just a commercial because it, it happened to me today and I think it's very important to bring some awareness to it. Um, para darles un poco de contexto, así súper rápido, en el call en el que yo estoy, yo oh, contacté a Lina para que Lina viniera y me les hiciera un examen a los chiquillos para certificarlos, porque se puede. Ahí, pulseando, ¿verdad? A los chiquillos toda la cantidad de oportunidades posibles. Entonces... Este, lo que les iba a contar era that's the part where you are related es súper divertido porque Lina me decía que para ellos poder digamos dar una certificación ellos tienen que asegurarse de que la persona maneja bien cada aspecto de, o no cada aspecto sino ese aspecto del, 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 del idioma entonces por ejemplo si yo, si yo quiero por ejemplo decir eh, no sé money está en intermedio y no en básico yo le voy a hacer ciertas preguntas pero esas preguntas tienen como un secret agenda, o sea, como una agenda secreta. ¿Cuál es la agenda secreta? Es entender no solo lo que me está preguntando, sino saber en qué tiempo verbal me lo está preguntando para contestarle en el mismo tiempo verbal. Si yo no le contesto en ese tiempo verbal, automáticamente el, el aplicador de la prueba va a decir, esta persona tal vez entiende, mas no es capaz de contestarme en el mismo tiempo verbal, o sea, no maneja la estructura. Algo tan simple como, por ejemplo, pasado, si yo les digo, what did you eat yesterday? Si usted no me dice, I ate a salad, I ate some fried chicken, because we love fried chicken here, right? I ate, bla, bla, bla. En ese caso, este, um, ustedes tal vez tienen el conocimiento, pero porque no están contestando, utilizando el mismo formato, digamos, o el mismo tiempo verbal, podrían pasar de, 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 de estar en intermedio o avanzado a un nivel inferior. Entonces, what I, the reason why I'm saying this is because if you eventually decide to go for any of these tests, y casi todos funcionan así, TOEIC, TOEFL, Trinity, um, CAE, Oxford, Cambridge, casi todos funcionan de esa forma, y se los digo por eso, porque es bueno prestar atención a estos detallillos, entonces, por ejemplo, si usted dice, ok, presente, perfecto, para activities that started in the past, and they may continue in the present. For example, I have taught English for 10 years. I have um, run marathons for more than 20 years uh, or since I was 10 years, etc. All these things. Si yo le digo, por ejemplo, have you, um, have you ever tried octopus? Y usted me dice solo, no. You go, okay, maybe the person understood the question. But if, if Moni says, no, I have never tried octopus. I don't think I would like it. That would be perfect. Entonces, yo digo, claro, no solo entendió la pregunta, sino que supo contestarme en el mismo tiempo verbal. So, um, this is just, uh, like, kind of a, a reminder, let's say, of paying attention to grammar and try to pay attention to what the person is saying. 
porque si les hacen un examen así, ustedes puede que tengan un nivel más alto, pero que hayan uno más bajo si no siguen ese formato, que es lo que les pasó o les está pasando a algunos de mis chiquillos del cole, que some of them understand, porque ellos entienden la pregunta, pero se les va a eso, o algo tan simple como presente simple, la misma, la misma aplicadora me decía, este, ese chiquillo tal vez está a un nivel más intermedio, pero por el hecho de que no me maneja las reglas de presente simple, de, la, de agregarle S al verbo o ES, automáticamente yo tengo que posicionarlo en un nivel básico, ni siquiera un intermedio, en un básico. Entonces, yo dije, I'm gonna tell my students so they pay attention to grammar because I think you're great, but these small things are key to making sure not only that you master the language, but also that you could get a good grade if you ever apply for any of these things, like any of these types of tests, okay? That was the commercial, close. <laughs> um, questions in regards to present perfect. Do you understand present perfect? How do you use it? ¿Se entiende bien cuando usarlo? ¿Cuánto? Like. Yes. No? Okay. How about like, you? Ha oído todos ocho en Spanish. Exactly. 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 And more than that, more than the grammar part, we're going to use it to talk about activities that we have done for quite some time. Para actividades que empezamos en el pasado y que puede que continúen o no en el, en el presente. ¿Por qué digo que puede que no? Porque puede ser que usted más bien le dejó de hablar a alguien por, I don't know, desde enero. Entonces, como que usted me diga, yo no le he hablado a Gertrudis desde enero. Entonces, ¿por qué? Es una actividad que usted pausó y la ha mantenido pausada todo este tiempo. Entonces, igual es un presente perfecto. Inició en el pasado y continúa en el presente, porque entonces en el presente usted continúa sin hablarle, ¿ok? O por actividades como, por ejemplo, eh, no sé, en, en el caso de Ginette, que le toca viajar por trabajo. Entonces, Ginette puede decir, ah, I have traveled to the U.S. since, no sé, o sea, eh, empezó a viajar desde X edad, ¿verdad? Este, o en el caso de Moni, que, que es como toda deportista, Moni puede decir, I started training, uh, or I have trained, I don't know, since five years ago, porque Moni también es súper joven, entonces como yo, entonces since like five years ago, ¿ok? Entonces, es para eso. Y el since y el for, just in case, since is to mark when it is started, ¿ok? No vamos a decir cuántos años ni nada. La gente puede hacer la matemática, pero el things es para decir eso. ¿Cuándo empezó? Por ejemplo, I can say, I, I have taught English since 20, I don't know, 2010, for example. Okay? Or you could go ahead and say, I have um, taught English for 10 years. Or in that case, it would be 13 years. But yes. Okay? Entonces, for to state the amount of time, o sea, for es cuando hicimos la matemática, decimos por tres semanas, dos días, tres años, treinta años, whatever, and since es solo para indicar when it started, pero no estamos diciendo cuándo finalizó ni cuándo va a finalizar, es solo para decir, ah, desde el tal fecha, ¿ok? Um, questions again? Super clear. Ok, entonces vamos a hacer el quiz de 185 preguntas que les traje, um, ya les voy a mandar el link. No, I'm kidding. Let's go to the practice. Uh, let's go, let's do the practice in page um, 143, 9B, parts A and B, okay?
teacher, I have problem with my book. What 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 is the the page? Uh, it's page one hundred and forty three. Okay.
Okay, guys, how did it go? Did you finish? Five minutes for teacher, please. Okay, okay.
Okay, guys, let's go ahead and check real quick. Um, in the first part, it says write questions with how long and the present perfect. The first one, it's already done. How long have you been married? Okay, number one. Um, let me see, Rolando. How long have you been afraid of flu? Flying. Flying. Mm -hmm. That is not changing because the one that you should conjugate is be, and you're saying been. So that's a good thing. How long have you been afraid of flying? Oh, flying is being used as the gerund. What we just saw, what we just covered a few weeks ago. Um, money number two. How long? <clears throat> how long has your sister had her new car? How long has your sister had her new car? Perfect. Thank you. Um, number three, Jeanette. Number three, how long, how long have they <laughs> lived in this town? Perfect. How long have they lived in this town? Number four, Dan. Four, how long has your father been a teacher? Mm -hmm. Number five, Ali. How long have your no, your boyfriend. Have you? Um, five. How no. long have you? Uh -huh. How long you have? Okay, again. How long have you know your boyfriend? No. No. Known. Don't forget to pronounce the N. Known. How long have you known your boyfriend? Okay. Um, number six, uh, Moni. How long has Spain been in the uh, European Union? Correct. Um, number seven, Jeanette. Seven. How long have you? Um, had your cat? How long? How long have you had your cat? Perfect, thank you. In number eight, Rolando. Hey, uh, how long have you been in this class? Perfect, very good, thank you. Questions with this part? Any doubts? Nope, okay. But let's go for the second part. Answer the questions in A. Use the present perfect plus for or things, okay? Um, I've been married for 20 years, okay? Uh, number one, done. One, I've been afraid of flying since 12 years. Since I was about- No, <laughs> yes, I was reading the first question. <laughs> Science, I was about 15. Remember, things, not science. Science is the subject, como ciencias. Things is the de. Things. Things. Mm -hmm. Number two, Ale. She has had uh, her car for three weeks. Perfect. Um, number three, Jeanette. Three, they have lived in this town for a long time. Correct. Number four, money. He has been a teacher for more than 20 years. Perfect. Number five, um, Rolando. All right. I, I can't complete this part, but I tried with the number five. Um, I know... Uh, I know my boyfriend since May. Yes. I've known my boyfriend since May. 
Um, number six, let me see. I think all of us already did it. Uh, done. It has been in the, I don't know, how do you say? UN? UN, no. Okay. Uh, EU, you... sorry. I'm, th I'm changing the organization. <laughs> okay, in the U, I don't know how to say, it, but since 1986. Correct. It's the European Union. It's the Union European Um. Okay. Ale, number seven. Yeah. We have had um, our cut for about two years. Correct. And number eight, uh, Jeanette. Eight. He's been in this class since last month. Very good, perfect. Okay, guys, in regards to the oh, questions, sorry, I didn't ask you for that part. Do you have any questions? Nope. Okay. Um, let me just check something real quick. Okay, last time the impromptu speech was done by Moni, Jan, Ale, and Jeanette. Jeanette, did you do it? No, I don't. Who was I the think... fourth person? I was, it's because I was checking. I think it was Rose. 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 Okay, yes, was the first so, one. Yeah, so we were <clears throat> Orlando, Jeanette, and... Uh, um, what's the name of this guy? Uh, Bernan. Bernan. Bernan Eduardo. Yes. Um, okay, guys, so who wants to go first? Pretty much, we only have the two of you. Uh, I want... <laughs> okay, Jeanette, you're going to be the first one. Give me a second to show you the screen. Um today I don't have a a drink <laughs> like, like last more like last more time. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I drink a beer for the important speech. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't have it, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, just give me a second. I wanna share that in a um one minute. With four tequilas, you can speak for a long time. <laughs> Probably. Oh my God. I just don't like tequila. I hate tequila. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Si me tocan bien, te cierro la sesión. <laughs> It is one of the topics, actually. I see, la pobre Rose. And let me see, because I was missing one. This, this topic, it's, it, I don't know, it's, 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 it's difficult. No, you don't know what happened to me once. Um, I was in university, 
I was taking a course, like an oral course, and I knew the teacher, like she was super nice. So we we were we were not friends, we were just we got along. So and she knew that I could act that I liked speaking. So she said, I'm gonna choose your topic. And she chose a topic for me for an impromptu speech, and it was politics. Oh. And I was like, and and I was laughing because I was in my mind, I was, I love you, but I hate you. Because I was like, I love you, but I hate politics. So and she gave me that topic because she knew that I was very like fluent. So she was like, I want to give you a challenge. And she was like, try to talk about politics. It was very difficult because in my mind, I was like, what can I say about politics? Like, I just, I, I, I know nothing about politics and I don't like politics. So it was, oh gosh, it was interesting. Okay, but without any further ado, let me share my screen so we can go ahead and start with the impromptu speech of the day. Okay, so um, Jeanette, since you volunteered to be first, um, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be um, spinning the wheel. Any, the topic that appears on um, the screen is the one that you'll have to speak for five minutes. Let me spin it so we can find out what your topic is going to be. <laughs> no, 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 let's do something since it is you. So I'm going to let's remove this one and let's do it again. Because we already talked about environment. It was Rose. So we're going to. Okay. Okay, television and TV series. Okay, let me just set the timer. And um okay, just one second. <clears throat> Five minutes. Okay, ready? Yes, one, two, three. I think so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, um, television and TV series is a better topic than the <laughs> last. <laughs> In my opinion, the television and TV series are important in very, very kind of things because we learn about the life, about the work, about the cook, about everything that we are interested in. Mm. The way I see these kind of things are for learn. I think when I was young, I saw a lot of TV series, series like friends, like ER, I I talk up talk to you about that series. That was um emergency room and every every day have a different kind of emergencies and we know like um um accidents like a uh, hair attack like a uh, high pressure like uh, broken uh, homes like to say huesos bones <laughs> bones um a lot of types of of things um i like it um, my husband see a lot of uh, TV series about crime, and I like looked with him, but I prefer crime, really, really <laughs> reality <laughs> crime, because the series about crime are so easy for me. <laughs> I know the end when start the epi episodio. Um, 
uh, I love the the series the TV series because um, it's entertainment too, and I all my life worked too much, too more too many hours a day. And when I uh, stay in home, I look the TV like a uh, rest. And when we are rest, we are learn about something too. Um, my daughter is studying psychology in the UCR, and she recommend us a lot of um uh, movies and tv series too and when we are in family like uh, last week we saw tv series with her and it's good because she uh, speak with us about the the psychology of the movie or tv series um Five years ago, I thought that I never uh, will see a TV series series again. But now, <laughs> I I am um, see two <laughs> like teacher recommend um the good place mm -hmm. and another that forget the name for with my husband mm. in two years i maybe can speak better about in english because the series i am i am seeing now um is it teacher <laughs> um okay that's great you were only missing five seconds to finish you thank can you. see thank you you see <laughs> You were only missing five seconds, so that was actually very good. You lasted almost five minutes. Good. Okay, Rolando, you ready? No. <laughs> well, as, <laughs> as the song says, ready or not, here we go. <laughs> okay, let me just, right here, okay, and here we go. There are three amazing topics over there for you. <clears throat> Such an easy topic. Okay, ready? Okay. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Uh, well, uh, it is up to me uh, to talk. Um, uh, to talk uh, uh, a little, uh, well, five minutes to uh, uh, impromptu to speech. Well, it is not a, a little, but I will try to talk about uh, about hobbies. Uh, for me, it's a, a very interesting topic because it's when you can use your time, your free time in activities, um, in, in, in different activities, uh, sports, um it's i don't know read the books um uh talk with your your family it's uh, the hobbies is uh uh a different experience when you uh feel very happy for example um in my case i like ride a, a bike especially uh a mountain bike because i like the mountain and i ride back and it's uh two experience in only one for example when i uh, write a, a back um i don't know uh for example um i don't know have have, have you ever tried to to have a read a books for example um well this uh, experience is a, a, a very interesting why a lot of people maybe don't like read uh, a books but 
I don't know when when all the people when uh, the the tell uh, I don't like uh, books for example is when more the people love uh, the books be uh, I don't know I I think it's especially the true histories because I don't know they they should uh, the reality of of life um, or I don't know for example um, this. Um, this uh, theory, uh, I, I don't remember the, the name uh, uh, in in English, is a uh, uh, dilemma social. It's uh, a, a true history when, when the people uh, live uh, all, all the, the, um, the day and all the, the experience in, in your life. I don't know, a other hobby, for example, um, it's, it's a different uh, uh, types of, of hobbies. Uh, for example, um, I like uh, a dance. Why? Because you can move all your body, you can uh, speak with a lot of people. Um, I don't know, it's, it's, it, that, that's very interesting. Uh, you can make uh, uh, play exercise. Uh, I don't know. It's it's, it's very important with uh, social with other people. Um, and I don't know. Other uh, other example uh, for for hobbies. Um, people like uh, fly for around the world and know other countries other gastronomies, other uh, people, for example. And uh, so it's um, a hobby uh, for the people who have a lot of money because that's very nice, but uh, that's very expensive too. So it's, it, but if you don't have a lot of money, but you can need, uh, I don't know, the, uh, uh, a little time for all, um, when you don't see people or you don't see uh, or you don't think uh, in your work, for example. So you can uh, visit the mountain, visit the, the um, uh, different places, the uh, well, restaurants with your people, make a uh, uh, Paris, for example. So, as you can see, it's uh, a very valid topic, and we can uh, perfectly talk for a long time uh, about this. But uh, I only have uh, five minutes. Maybe for the next level, we can have uh, ten minutes for the front of speech. But for uh, the moment, this is my uh, contribution. Um, uh, thank you for the participation. Thank you. Um, ten minutes for next time. I want to say that. I want to say that to the next teacher. Hey, like they think they should have a <laughs> ten minutes in front to speech each one of them. <laughs> okay. Um. Thank you, Orlando. Thank you, Jeanette. So, guys, it's already eight ten. We've been here for more than two hours and you've been doing great. So I'm gonna let you go now so you can go and eat and rest and I'll see you this coming Wednesday, okay? Take good care of you. Have an amazing evening and see you. Hey, bye-bye, see you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, see you. Bye-bye.